Hi, my name is Chris and today in this video I want to talk to you about the pod mic by Rode and of course the main purpose of this microphone being podcast recording. Now before we start, some transparency, this microphone was provided by Rode but the video is not going to be seen by them before it goes live. This here is my opinion and my opinion only. Now, of course, this microphone, as the name is suggesting, is thought for podcasting. And I would agree that this is the main purpose of this. this is a voice microphone. It more or less has a built-in pop filter as well as shock mount. And overall, it is a very sturdy construction. It is definitely made for studio purposes, in my opinion, because it is so heavy that I would not necessarily suggest traveling with this. Of course, if you have a podcast studio in a box or something like that and you carry that around and maybe you just go on trains or transport in a car, this might not be as much of a problem. But for someone who wants to go traveling, I'm not going to suggest this microphone. But of course, it's also not made for that. It's a super heavy construction. It's a super solid construction. And pretty much all the things about this microphone are metal, except for these twisty things, the caps here, those are made out of plastic, but everything else is pretty much metal. The grill is metal, all the construction around is metal. And again, that makes the whole construction relatively heavy. This microphone, of course, is also a 100% XLR-based microphone. There's no way of using this with USB, except for, of course, when you also use an audio interface or an audio recorder like I am using here with the Zoom F6. Something I really like about this microphone is that they did not go for the implementation of hundreds of different features. There are no twists and dials on this mic. It simply is a standard simple XLR based microphone like for example the Shure Beta 57A that I have here is also. There are no dials here, no switches, there is simply just a XLR plug and that's it. And that makes it really easy that it can simply just be perfect for those certain use cases that it is made for. It doesn't have to bridge any gaps or stuff like that. Now, of course, that also means that there are no real features that I can talk about except for have you listened to this. However, before we jump into the sound comparison and the sound samples that I have recorded with this microphone, but also I am going to throw in the ATR2100 that I have here, which has a XLR and a USB port. And then I will also include the Shure Beta 57A, which I've been using for podcasting for the last year or two. And lastly, I also have another Rode microphone that I wanna throw into the mix, and that is the Rode VideoMic NTG. Because when I started this channel specifically, my background was actually in being a digital nomad and I also do a lot of video work and of course running this YouTube channel. And the reason why I want to include this microphone specifically in this test is because this microphone has a absolute dual purpose for pretty much all of the different things. You can use it as a USB microphone on your computer, but you can also use it as an on-camera microphone. But I wanted to include this in the sound samples to kind of show what different types of microphones are going to give you as a result, also considering the different use cases and of course the different environments that you want to use these in. And with that, let's jump into the sound samples, which have been primarily recorded with the Zoom F6 in 32-bit float mode, and they have been normalized to minus 16 LUFS. Now, one thing I have to add in here is that I noticed a slight clicking in some of the sound samples in the background that I don't know where it is coming from. Right now, I am suspecting that it might be somehow connected to the Zoom F6 and how it is connected to a power source at this moment in the sound samples but I'm still trying to figure this out. So this is not something that is coming from the microphones and it is also present for some of the microphones, but just so you are aware of this. Dig deep within yourself, for there's a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there's a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there's a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. 
Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Now listening back to these samples, to me the Rode Pod mic has the most broadcasty or I don't know, the warmest and nicest and deepest response in comparison to all of the other microphones. And I was actually surprised in terms of how well it also handled the wind of my mouth essentially when I have it right up my mouth. And the reason why you of course want that is because you also want to go for that kind of proximity effect and you wanna drown out anything from around it. So you wanna be nice and close to this right there and present. This is what this microphone is definitely made for. And as you could also hear based on these sound samples is that the further you go away, that effect of course goes very quickly down the tubes and you want to be right up on this microphone. Now there are of course also pop filters that you can put on top of this microphone. However, that kind of defeats the purpose of the look of this microphone. But then again, is it about the look of the microphone or is it about the quality of the sound that you get out of it? And maybe that's something that could also be improving the audio quality that you get with this microphone here. But I don't think it is actually necessary if you use this microphone correctly. If for example, you're not necessarily putting it like this in front of your mouth that you're literally speaking into it, but more a little bit off to the side. So most of the gushes go straight over it. Now, when I look at the other microphones and the alternatives, the Shure Beta 57A, of course, as a vocal microphone, and I remove the wind filter from the front. This is how the microphone itself looks, basically. This microphone has a sibling, which is the Beta 58A, and that's more commonly used for vocals. However, this here also has a pretty good response for this type of work. However, as I am broadening my horizon and I have more gear accessible to me, it is quite surprising how different a microphone like the pod mic can sound to something like this and how the response and the kind of microphone literally makes a difference in the voice that you have and the sound that you get out of it. So with that in mind, it's probably actually a really good idea to test your voice on different microphones before committing to a certain specific kind. Now for this test, I would order these microphones from the top with the pod mic, then the Shure Beta 57A, then in terms of podcast microphone usage, the ATR2100. Now this has a couple of benefits in terms of its features, like for example, being able to use it with a USB connection to your computer. However, I have a video specifically about those USB type microphones for podcasting coming up on the channel as well. And it will be linked in the description below once it's ready or up here in the corner. Now this microphone in terms of plosives and response of the sound and stuff like that, I would say it is absolutely necessary to get some kind of a foam filter. So that would be something that I think is absolutely necessary here. But the same thing is true for the Beta 57A, which also absolutely has the necessity to use a foam filter in front so that you don't worry about those plosives all too much. Now bringing it all together with the mic that's a bit different, but I still wanted to include it here because it might give you that very specific use case of being a all round microphone for podcast recording, for using it with a computer, and of course also using it as a video microphone if you are doing all of these different types of productions, because at the beginning at least, it's not necessarily possible to invest in all of the different things, to have a dedicated podcast microphone, have a dedicated video microphone, and so on and so forth. And for that, I will definitely take a look at this microphone. It is quite remarkable how well it responds to voice when you bring it up close, and how well you can work with this. However, you do have to work on the microphone technique in this kind so that you don't have those plosives, those explosive sounds basically right up the microphone. It is best to use with the foam wind filter and also with the pointing of the microphone. Where in this case with the pod mic, you can get away with really talking into it like this. If you do the same thing with a microphone like this, that would not necessarily give you the best result that you want.
Now bring it all together and in conclusion, I think the pod mic is a phenomenal microphone for your podcast to start out with. However, you have to keep in mind that it's damn heavy and definitely not made for hand holding. You want a stand for this in some kind of way, be it a Rode PSA1 or some kind of a desk stand or something similar. That is absolutely necessary for this microphone because this is just way too heavy to hand hold. If you want something that you can hand hold, then something like the Beta 58A might be a better option there. However, you are making a couple of drawbacks in terms of the sound quality that you get out of it in terms of not being so broadcast. It's not that it's a bad microphone or worse microphone, it's a different microphone. This here gives you more of the broadcast sound, a lower tone to it, and I think that's probably what people want to go for when they are creating a podcast. Now, of course, if you want to use a microphone like this because it has no other connections than XLR, you will either need an audio interface if you want to use just a solo podcasting situation or you want to use this for live streaming or, for example, creating remote podcasts, then an audio interface is a great choice. However, I don't have much experience with those because I use the Zoom F6 as my audio interface and also the audio recorder, which I use when I go and record podcasts with it. However, I have heard good things about audio interfaces like, for example, the Scarlett Focusrite. Now, if you want to have an actual dedicated hardware audio recorder, then I would, of course, recommend you check out, for example, the Rodecaster Pro, which, of course, I have not used at this point. And in my personal opinion, it is too big for what I would want to use it for. However, I do have a review and a couple of other videos around the Zoom P4, which is a much smaller package and also less expensive in terms of being able to record up to four people in a podcast situation with, for example, the pod mic right here. And so to build a studio, you would essentially buy as many microphones as you want guests, up to four in the cases of the devices that I am mentioning. Then of course also a audio recorder like the P4 or the Rodecaster Pro, or maybe even the P8 if you want to have those many guests. And then you just need a couple of XLR cables and you're pretty much good to go to start creating your podcast to a really, really high standard. Now to close things off, I think the pod mic is a great studio podcast microphone so that you can get your podcast up and running. It sounds like a broadcast microphone, it has the features of it, and if you're doing a video podcast, it also looks pretty stunning. Now with that said, if you have any thoughts or questions, you can of course leave those in the comment section down below. If you want to check out the microphones that I talked about or the gear that I use for the production here, you can also find links in the description. And I would appreciate a thumbs up if you found this video helpful or in any kind of way interesting. Now with all that, I hope you have an amazing day, make it your life, record your podcast, and I will see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.